Here. Eleanor Gorman. Here. Richard Wills. Here. Pat Brunstad. Here. I have a motion to excuse Greg Cox. He told us that we missed missing this meeting. I'll move that we excuse Greg Cox. I have a second. Second. So moved. <clears throat> I have a motion to approve the meeting. At, oh, I'll do public comments first. Okay. We have any public comments, sir? I did not receive any of the email. We do have a citizen on the line, Marlene Penry. Do you have a public comment? Yes, please. Yes. They got three minutes. Um, I, on the building standards thing, I don't know if there's anything you can do about this, but it's certainly something that I've noticed as my neighborhood has been built out. And that is basically the same house is being built over and over and over again. Um, some it's uh, the ones that if you look at them from the front there's three roofs over the front porch and sometimes the porch is on the left sometimes the porch is on the right sometimes there's a garage sometimes they're not but as you and they're all either rock or gravel in front so as you drive down the street it's like you're seeing the same house over and over again um, and I was trying to remember in when the comp plan was being done I think some building standards were looked at then and for some reason, the city of Issaquah is in my mind. Um, I, that may be, don't put any money on it, but I thought they had some sort of standards about the same kind of house being next to each other, or at least a, mi a mirror image of the house counted as the same house. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know, if you, if you wanna come down Ocean Shores Boulevard sometime and turn on to Sportsman Street, where eight or nine new houses are in that three block area. Um, when you turn off Motion Stars Boulevard, you see from the side, you see the same, the same roof line over and over again. Um, then the other one that's going up is a tall front wall with, the, uh, with skylights along the whole front wall. And that, uh, that uh, roof line is not going to meet up. I, I don't have a problem with the, with the houses, but that roof line is not gonna meet up, up with anything like a 412 or a 512, whatever you're talking about. It's much less, much less steep than that. So anyway, that's what I was thinking, just watch, just looking at my neighborhood. And I don't know that there's anything to do about it, but I thought I'd mention it. Thank you. Can I have a motion to approve the meeting agenda? I move we approve the meeting agenda. Have a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? So move. Hey, do I have a motion to approve the minutes of April 13th, 2021? This is Richard and I move that we approve those minutes. Have a second? Second. Any discussion? So move. <clears throat> okay, we're to our discussion point, building standards, and I'll turn it over to Tanya. Okay, thanks, Dan. Um, all right, well, uh, we've all reviewed the Linden document, I hope, and I think we should just open it up for discussion about the specific items in that document. Um, I don't know if everyone is prepared to go through that item by item, or if you each have um, specific things that you want to talk about before we do that. So I'm open to discussion about how we proceed. What, what would you guys like to do? Yes, Richard. So I took some time and uh, 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 I'm prepared to do a screen share with that document on the screen. And as I read through the document, I made some specific comments that I think are fair or that, that, I, that I'd like to see the Planning Commission discuss. So if that will help the meeting, I can have Tanya turn on screen share and I can put that document on the screen and we can just go down the document. My vision as I thought about what we're going to do, I personally uh, uh, think that the Linden document is a great starting point. Uh, there's some modifications I think to be made and I think that there may be some items that we want to add and for sure some items we want to take off. So uh, the first thing is if everybody would like, I'll put that document on the screen and we can just go down it line by line and say, keep this, scrap that, modify, 
the next. Any comments? Does anyone else have an itemization that they want to go through, or are you okay sharing Richard's virgin version? I think it's a good starting point. Perfect. Okay, so I will do. Um, I don't. Can I do a share screen? Yeah, I think you can. It's on the bottom of your. Uh... If I do share screen, won't it show my screen? It'll show your screen exactly. Okay, so don't we want to share your version of the document? Well, the advantage to my version is I've already made comments. Right. But uh, uh, everybody may or may not agree with my comments. I still want to bring them up. Uh, um, okay, I'll share the version I have. I've highlighted sections as well, but we can all go ahead and um, make a comment as we reach particular sections. So um, I tried to share screen and it says host disabled participant screen sharing. So Sarah, are you the host? She is, and she has to turn it on for you. It's on. You should okay. be able to do it now. Thank you. OK, so let's go ahead and look at that document. OK. Does everyone see the document? Yes. All right. OK. So. Um, is there anyone that did not get a chance to review this? Okay. All right, so I think we're gonna just go ahead and look item by item, but before we jump into that, um, please um, either make a mental note or, or write it down or um, send us an email of things that you think this is missing as we go through it. Because like Richard said, this, this probably doesn't encompass everything that we want to talk about for Ocean Shores. Okay, so uh, ignore my highlights. These are just things that I thought were interesting. So we'll just get started then. So 1922.010, it just talks about why Linden has this particular ordinance. And I think that that's pretty self-explanatory. So the purpose, um, something I thought that was interesting when you look at um, A or at B.1, the purpose is to um, enhance property values, but also to invite pedestrian scale elements and to ensure adequate parking. So I think that as we talk about design standards, we're, we've, been limiting ourselves to specifically talking about the structure, but we could also be talking about the neighborhoods and pedestrian accessibility and a whole number of other things. So just something to keep in mind. All right, so they also encourage in B2 uh, to encourage low impact design. That is another thing we have not even begun to talk about that we could be adding into these discussions. We could add in low impact design, which is basically stormwater management. We could add in green building design. We could add in a lot of things into this discussion. Okay, 1922.020, um, so I'm on page two, uh, right at the top here in, in bold. And then it just talks about the objective and it's, it covers different sections. So A, we've got lot coverage. I don't think that's that important for today. We've got building orientation. Um, Tanya? Yes. Sorry to, I'm no, go pretending, ahead. pretending to take notes, so I'm a little slow on the come. Uh, B, C, uh, to reduce the visual impact of garage and accessory structures. So what this means to me in other neighborhoods is they say, no, I don't like your house because I see your garage doors. We want your garage doors to be on the side of your home. So this right away for me raises red flags that you're literally telling people, I don't wanna see your garage doors. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, they have an entire section in this, in this about garages. So, I mean, I think we probably would not be copying and pasting this. Right. We would, we would just be getting some pointers from this and then making our own language. When you've got uh, when you've got eighty foot wide lots, which Pat is that the normal lot size? 
No, like 60 for a lot of them, right? 60, okay. Then things like this make it virtually impossible to, to do. So we gotta right. be careful. Yeah, a lot of the specifics on this probably won't apply for us in terms of setbacks. Um, but there are some interesting things. So we'll just kind of go through and please anybody just um, stop me if you want to discuss something in specifics. Okay, so building orientation. Um, this could be relevant because they talk about where the primary pedestrian entrance is to kind of make make things appear inviting to people walking down the sidewalk. Now we don't have sidewalks and we haven't really talked about this, but I do think pretty typically you wanna see a front door along the street side. Um, so that's something we could specify in our code. So I, I have a question. And, yes. And my question is, uh, my idea is that we would start with this document and, and modify this existing document. And what I think I heard you say is that you want to instead take what items and create a brand new document. So I would just appreciate clarification of how we are going to come up with a final document. Uh, um, uh, and, and it just seems easy to take this existing document uh, we're talking about 1C to reduce visual impact in the garage door thing. And in my opinion, we just delete that line and and move on. Uh, or if we need to modify the wording of a line, we just modify it in this document. And when we get done, we will have the outline of a new Ocean Shores document. And I just make this suggestion, what is going to make the process easiest? I agree with you, Richard, and that would depend on how much of this document we actually want to keep. I currently, after reading through it today, think we're probably just going to pull out a couple of things and likely won't need the majority of this document. But I could be wrong, and I am not the authority on how we proceed forward with this. And, and based on our success with City Council to, to actually say the words completely redo or start from scratch is going to induce terror in their eyes. I, I too would support what Tanya just, Tanya just said about uh, taking bits of good out and then inserting that into ours. So how do we identify what are the bits of good? And, and, and Tanya, are you going to do that? Are you going to keep a separate set of notes about what we're keeping and what we're not keeping? That's a really good suggestion, Richard. I can do that. So um, right now I just, referenced on my own notes that we could, we might want to talk about where a front door is located. Um, so anything that the commissioners think is relevant, just let me know and I'll add it to the list and then I will email that back out to everyone when we are done today so that we all have an a ongoing list to reference. Um, yeah. Does that work for everyone? Somebody oh. just said that they only heard a part of. Oh. I, I think a lot of this we can we can pick out some good things. I think a lot of this is a much stricter standard than Ocean Shoals is ready to accept. I also immediately think about the front door. My garage is on the front of the house. My mm -hmm. my entry door is at the side of the house, and I just don't think it's appropriate to tell people where the front door should be. So I think we need to pick out the good things and perhaps highlight the things we're interested in putting into our document, because I think a lot of this is way beyond what's acceptable for Ocean Shores. Okay, I agree, Eleanor. Um, I think that let's list items that we think are relevant and we don't have to decide today if we're going to include them or not, but let's let's note the ones that we think are worth talking about further Good. And, and then move forward. Does that work for everyone? That works for me. Okay. And so then I would just like clarification of where are we at right now? What so far that we have covered are we keeping? Well, I have made a note that I think talking about the front door location might be relevant. Eleanor saying she doesn't think that's 
um, applicable to ocean shores. So I'll keep it on the list, but we'll have to all kind of vote about the ones that we think are important to carry forward. Well, while we're discussing front doors, why not just make that decision right now? Uh, and I agree with Eleanor that, that uh, um, I'm not sure that it's all that important in our community, whether your front door is on the street side or the side of the house or even on the waterfront side of the house, uh, because we have all of those prevalent in this community. Uh, and so if we get to this front door statement, we just say uh, the front door is not, not front door is up to the, to the owner's discretion or some oh. such way. So I have something that I realized that's way out there and I don't mean to be disrespectful to people that have done this. It, ha it You made me think about the front door issue. So I, I saw a specific home that was a manufactured home that the owner had decided to put in what I call sideways. So the front door was facing their neighbor rather than the street. So we can say, well, that's not really that important. Well, maybe one characteristic would help. By doing that on that particular home, the electrical box for services was front and center, right in the middle, you know, facing the street. And maybe that is something that, that's a massive aesthetic, that, that electrical box staring at you where the front door normally would be on a normal home. So why don't we add the location of the electrical box to our list of things to the utilities, maybe if it's and I'm just brainstorming, maybe the utility should be on a side of a home, not street facing. There, there is a spot later on in this document uh, that talks about I forgot the word that they used. Uh, all of the uh, ancillary uh, mechanical, they use the word mechanical uh, in the electrical box, I think would be part of that, as long as you're along with your heat pump and those kinds of things. Uh, and so when we get to that area, I think that it's fair to stipulate all new construction that the mechanical, and there may be a better word, uh, is not located on the street side of the house. And if we want to be even more flexible to say at least that it's covered, meaning someone has a shrub that completely covers it so you don't even know it's there. Just, just something to soften that part of an of a installation. And, and I agree, and the Linden uh, document does say that. Cool. All right. So keep moving forward. Um, so we were on B here, building orientation. We've decided we're not going to worry about the language regarding the front door. Um, I think a lot of the rest of this doesn't really apply to us. Setbacks. So, I don't. Oh, go ahead. We're on B. Where I'm. I'm. I, I'm. Oops. Sorry. Let me go back up. I'm a crazy driver. Um, all right, so we're on the second page, 19.22.020. And if I highlight, let me, I wish I could um, clear, let me clear out the current highlighting so that you can follow along with what I'm looking at. Oh, did that work? That did not work. That's not, um, okay. I don't know how to get rid of my current highlighting, but let me start with blue highlighting where I, okay, if I do that, can you see where I'm at? Yeah. I just kind of, yeah? yeah? Okay, so we're, we were just discussing this section B, building orientation. Again, we decided that's probably not that relevant to us. Um, now we're looking at section C, setbacks. Again, I don't know if these are that relevant, but we can certainly look through them. Ocean Shores has our own setbacks already. Yeah, I think that's uh, Eleanor, it's, I can't hear you very well. Oh, I have to return to the back there, everybody. Yeah. It said, I think the setbacks that we have in Ocean Shores seem to work pretty well. Okay, so can we, we can probably just skip this whole sec, setback section. So I agree, something's going on with Eleanor's uh, audio. Hmm. 
<laughs> All right, and then we have section D, garage setbacks, whoops. Um, garage setbacks from property lines. Again, I don't think this is relevant. We have our own setbacks. Um, section E, pedestrian connection. I love the idea that we would require everyone to start installing sidewalks, but we are not there. I think we can, are, are we all in agreement about that? Yeah. Yes. Okay, okay so this uh, is the- uh, So I, I do have a question. Are we ever gonna be there? Uh, <laughs> other, other towns like Montesano just say, sorry, you're getting your building permit in 2021 and the new ordinance says you build a sidewalk to nowhere, but eventually they get hooked up. You know, Puyallup, Puyallup does that as well um, and has for decades in, in their downtown area. So if you, I, I mean, that's going to be a tough sell though, you know. I think the biggest problem is, I, I think most people that already have a home in Ocean Shores love putting extra burdens on new, new buyers and self new owners. But the biggest issue would be the city staff needing to determine what the actual setback is, you know, where, where is the right of way so that uh, there isn't confusion. And I worry mostly about them being able to, to, to do that. I'm not, I'm not worried about a new guy building a house that is burdened with spending 10 grand on a sidewalk. I'm worried about the city staff having the pain of deciding where that setback is and being consistent so that the sidewalks eventually do line up in the future. I'm afraid of a, that horrible thing called a lid coming up. I think we should stay away from it. Well, if owners are spending it, the money on their own to do it, that prevents us from ever having a lid proposed. Um, I think, I don't know the exact numbers, but I, I think we're roughly uh, two thirds developed at this point. Is that correct? Does anyone know? We're, That's we're really supposed well. to have. About half. Okay. So, so, can I make a comment about requiring sidewalks real quick? Please do. So the issue with requiring sidewalk is, is feasibility. So most, a big majority of the houses that are built require um, a culvert. That culvert's put in um, because we have open ditches for drainage. And the sidewalk needs to not be on on personal property needs to be on city property because those sidewalks are essentially turned over to the city um the problem is is with a lot of these drainage ditches the property line starts right at the edge of that ditch so you would have to fill in the entire drainage dish with culvert and then put a sidewalk over the top of it i don't know if you add sidewalks, you're also talking about stormwater management, which is basically what Pat's saying. So it's not just installing sidewalks, it would be a bunch of um, stormwater management infrastructure along with the sidewalk. So it's it's kind of complicated, but I agree Agreed. with Rich that we might want to talk about necessary setbacks to plan for future sidewalks. Well, I, I more agree with what Pat has just said. Uh, and and I have a hard time visualizing how this one new uh, house in the middle of the block and they put a sidewalk in and what does it connect to? And what Pat is pointing out is, is it's, the sidewalk has to be in the drainage ditch. And most of the properties in the neighborhoods that I frequently drive through all have drainage ditches and there's no place except on the owner's property to put the sidewalk. My personal thought at this moment is that we do not address sidewalks until Ocean Shores is ready to put sidewalks throughout the city. Uh, and, I agree. And I disagree because I think that if we're going to look at building code, we might as well talk about what are the setbacks for the existing structures that we are permitting that would be necessary to allow sidewalks in the future. I don't think it's a major change. I just think it might mean people have to move their fence back like three feet or something. I don't, I just think well, one, that- the things, 
One thing's coming to mind too. Uh, I didn't think about what Pat was discussing and you guys are right. And the, the terminology that I hear in other cities isn't drainage ditch, it's biofiltration swale. So we're being very good to the environment because we have these biofiltration swales that the water is going to and slowly seeping into the earth rather than being rushed down some stream and you know into the, into the ocean. So uh, I, I do see the complication and I think the real terminology for us is the biofiltration swale because a lot of places the water just sits there and absorbs. I think, Rich, to, to that point, a biofiltration swale works in the summer um, when we don't have a lot of rain and we don't have a high water table. A biofiltration system doesn't work in the winter um, because our water table is at two feet. There's nowhere for that water to go and all it's going to do is flood, which hence the drainage ditches, which are kind of a biofiltration swale, um, they fill up and they stay full for days. Um, yeah. So then if, if you exacerbate it, put sidewalks on top of that or behind it or in front of it, whatever you do, it's just going to make things, I mean, you'd have to get a whole bunch of civil engineering done on this thing to make it work. And it, that would be yeah, putting that burden on the- Then there's no place for the water to go. I, I get it. Correct. Right. The other thing that, the other thing is Ocean storage is over half a little over half to go back. And it's, it's you've got a you've got a lot here and there that's in neighbor, neighborhoods that it isn't built on. So how can you tell the new guys that they got to put a little sidewalk when the other places don't have them and they're not gonna get them? Well that that happens all the time and it's not a popular discussion, but yes, it's uncomfortable. Well it's not and now, I, my belief is that would never fly. I, I just can't see it getting past council. Oh, I agree with you. Uh, they've, they've done it in other cities, though. Montesano is a perfect example. They have sidewalks to nowhere everywhere. Yeah. Is that how we want those stories to look? That would look dumb. It does look dumb. Another problem that I see with mandating sidewalks on all new construction is that it looks to me that we're taking a big chunk of that uh, property owner's property away from them and gifting it to the city uh, because th th they have to have a setback away from the ditch uh, unless we're going to all of a sudden address, make a major address towards stormwater. Uh, and as Patrick pointed out, uh, our, our existing system barely handles uh, winter rains as it is. And we add impervious sidewalks to that. And I think that we are creating a, a major uh, um, stormwater drain off issue by mandating sidewalks in residential neighborhoods. Now, side, demanding sidewalks in the business districts is a whole different kettle of fish, I think. But right now we're talking about residential. Okay, so I think we can all agree. Go ahead, Eleanor. I was gonna say, I, I think at this time we should pass on sidewalks. I, I think it's just a real can of worms. And I don't think there's any way we'd get agreement from the council on that. Just my opinion. You're right. So could we move on to the next one? Okay, so if you can see um, top of the first page here, section D, we've got garage setbacks from property lines. Again, I don't think this is relevant for ocean shores. We already have regulations about setbacks. Um, section E, pedestrian connection. Again, not really relevant for ocean shores. So if we get into 19.22.030, we've got residential architecture and attached garages. So there are some pieces of this that could be really useful. Um, section A talks about residential structure. And it says all dwellings must be placed on a permanent foundation and the space between the foundation and the bottom of the home must be enclosed by concrete or approved concrete products. So 
this would um, ad actually coincide with the um, modular or mobile home problem where they're not placing them right now on a uh, on a, what I consider a proper foundation. And if we kept this wordage in, I think it could take care of that problem where they would have to be set on a permanent foundation. I agree. All right. Didn't you, didn't you mention that the base has to be concrete, almost like a, I mean, that the floor has got to be concrete? So the, in our existing zoning, and I may get these numbers wrong, but we have three zone criteria specifically uh, molded to manufactured homes. And I think that it's zone 6A uh, that you can, you can live in your pickup mobile home on that zone if I read that ordinance correctly. And then zone 6B and 6C, and I may have these upside down, uh, that they all require a permanent foundation. So permanent foundation is already addressed in the zoning ordinances. Uh, um, and then a second thing is I'm not sure I understand, and, and if somebody can uh, uh, make me smarter, uh, why why the need, because it's both here in the Linden and in the Ocean Shores, a concrete appearing skirting around the mobile home? What's the reasoning behind that? Well, can, can we just backtrack here a little bit? I've watched them put in modular homes and they're sitting them on a, uh, about a 12 by 12 inch uh, pile, cement piling. I think they should be on a permanent foundation just exactly the way a stick built house is. So I don't know where those homes are at, but the zoning code pretty specifically states uh, permanent foundation, except in that one uh, mobile home zoning area, which is actually right up there by the main gate, right, right behind the bank up there at the main gate. Uh, and everything else has to be on a permanent foundation. So if the if they got an occupancy permit, then the building inspector must have inspected and say this qualifies as a permanent foundation. Uh, um, otherwise, they couldn't have got an occupancy permit. Well. I, I, I would like you to go by the corner of Mount Olympus and i um, trying to think of the name of the other street. It's just past Overlake. And we watched that house go in and it is sitting on a 12 inch by 12 inch piling for a foundation. And that's in a residential area. What's it got for skirting? It is skirted. Um, is it concrete or metal or wood? No, it's, I, you know, I don't remember offhand what it was, but it is not concrete. But it's, I certainly wouldn't consider pilings sitting on dirt a permanent foundation. And we watched that because we were aghast. Is this, was this a, mod, a modular manufactured home or was it? Yes, a, yes. Okay. In a residential R1 neighborhood. So I think, I think the point of the, <clears throat> that residential structure and it, if, we had, if we adopted the language that's, that's here, it's actually pretty good. Typically a mobile home is they pour a concrete slab and then they strap it down to that concrete slab. And then they put some sort of a skirting around it. Um, and it, this would make it be concrete or an approved concrete product, such as concrete block. And that, there was no concrete slab under that building. Yeah, well, I don't know about that one particular, but probably of the multiple ones that I've seen done, they've all done them on slabs. So, and I'm okay with that. I'm just. Yeah, I think that if we if we go along with this, a, um, what the verbiage is on this, it actually takes care of the problem because exactly. this also um, applies to manufactured homes. So and so does. That's so exactly does the point I was making. To leave it in. 
Yep, and same with the second, the second thing. The eaves and gables. Eaves and gables to be 12 inches minimum. Okay. So, so about Pat, I, I have two questions and, and it, both of them about, so can, can you help me understand uh, why the verbiage concrete uh, appearing sturdy? Uh, what's the point of that? And then on, on item A2, uh, uh, why 12 inches? Is that is 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 that something about about makes the building safer, or is that an aesthetic criteria? Uh, it, it's it's an aesthetic. Um, it so if you look at mobile homes, most of them have like a three or a four inch eave um, because 12 inch eaves get to be problematic for transportation down the highway, but. The 12 inch eaves also have some aesthetic appeal way more than like a three inch eave. So to me, I think that this would be a huge improvement if we just adopted that. And then going back to your first question, it doesn't say it enclosed by concrete or approved concrete products, not concrete looking. It says concrete or concrete approved concrete products, which would mean um, concrete block. So you could do a cast pour in place concrete or you could do concrete block. Um, would you would, suggest that we eliminate the ability to do concrete block? I don't, I think it's fine. And it's also structural. But we so, may want to, instead of say approved concrete products, we could say approved concrete block products or something along that line so it's not so vague. Or we could make a list of approved products as well. Correct. So uh, I want to go to item two for just a moment. And again, I'm, I'm looking for my own uh, edification. Uh, I, I thought that one of the reasons for an eve overhang was that it, it helped divert rainwater away from directly being on the foundation and and that that added to the livability of the house because it, it helped prevent mold and mildew and, and water damage under the house is no that, that that's not what it's for okay uh, eaves are are for aesthetic gutters downspouts and drainages to keep the water away from the house so the, the eaves, I mean, I, I'm a fan of, of an, a minimum of 12 inch eaves because I do believe it helps protect the house, but that's not, that's not by design, it just, just happens. So, um, but it's definitely aesthetic and it's something that if on manufactured homes, a 12 inch eave requirement is going to substantially reduce the options that people would have um, for that. So I, def I am definitely a proponent of keeping that, that language in. I, I don't know if it actually reduces options. It, it reduces them buying something that's sitting on a lot already built that's got a three inch eave. But uh, I, I've been told by uh, a friend that has a manufactured home business that they can build it virtually any way you want to. Right. So uh, again, I, uh, I'm going to show my ignorance. Uh, um, and so the definition of an eave, I, I assumed that if I have a, a, a standard roof on a house uh, and the overhang in front of my garage, uh, my, my garage is at the front of the house, that that was an eave is that area along the side of the house that the gutters are hung on, is that also an eave? Yes. So what it is, is it's the roof overhang to the side wall. I'll draw a picture so you know what I'm talking about. So the distance, I don't know if you can see this or not. No, you can't. Um, so where your, where your fascia is on, off of your roof pitch, if you measure back to the side wall, that is we'd have it a minimum of 12 inches. So that needs to be mentioned that it's uh, not including the gutter, it's excluding. 
excluding the gutter. It's it's to the fascia. Do you see any builders in town that don't build to this spec? No. Maybe those maybe those triplexes that are going in right now. Uh, I it seems to me they don't have much of a need. But I mean, even for them, it'd be no big deal to, to run those tails out and over their few inches to get the 12 inches. And those examples that you just gave, they're as close to a manufactured home as I've seen stick built in this town. Correct. So as, as I better understand the language, uh, I'm, I am in very much in favor of leaving A1 and 2 pretty much as they are. Uh, somebody suggested that some, some slight modification. Uh, that thing about the eave does not include the gutter. I think that that's uh, important. Uh, so I'm in favor of what that says. And we add the language and does not include the gutter. And the I'm, product. I'm not so sure about number A2, though. The, the last sentence in A2, I, I think I'm not comfortable with leaving that in there. Yeah, correct. So this is not applicable to rear roofing or additions to existing structures? Yeah, so, I, I think if we have the 12 inches, if they add a room to the house, they still have 12 inches. If they add a room to the house, oh. it's different uh, uh, than re-roofing. Oh, I see an additions to existing structures. Yeah, uh, I see what you're getting at. The, so the only pro problem with that, Rich. Then I have to have 12 inches. Yeah, the only problem with that, Rich, is, is if you have a structure that doesn't have it architecturally, and then you all of a sudden you put this addition on, you got these 12 inch eaves, it's going to look okay. Weird. So, language maybe should say, unless pre existing structure doesn't, it, doesn't it already include. says that, it already well, implies that. Yeah, he's putting a caveat in there that if it looks right, it's okay. And if it doesn't look right, that's okay. All right. And I think, I think that that piece is something that we could add to as well. So um, like maybe put some language in there for porches, covered porches. There's a whole section about porches um, oh. later on in here. Okay. And they, and they say in that section that the porches cannot include the eave. So an eave's not a replacement for a porch. Okay. Okay. Um, so if you guys are noticing on the side, on the um, left side of the screen, I'm adding comments. So anything where you want the language to be changed, I'm noting it in the comments. And then okay. I will share this version of the document back out with everyone after the meeting. All right. Cool. So Tanya, I thank you, and and I think that what would also be might be helpful is those things that we have said don't apply. Just go ahead and delete those out of the existing document so they don't clutter it up. And we're reading a bunch of stuff that we're that we're we've already rejected. Did that make sense? I guess I'm a little uncomfortable just going in and deleting everything right now. Just um, read just read one. I'm I'm it's highlighting everything. Light. I'm highlighting everything that we want to keep in the bright blue. So anything that's not highlighted in bright blue, we can ignore. Is that okay? okay? So that gives us an opportunity to see what we are taking out and what we are leaving in. And it just leaves the, yeah. it leaves the context for whatever we're talking about in case we need to reference it for some reason. Yeah. Okay. I like Okay, thanks. Um, now on to B, building height. Again, I don't think the building height really applies to Ocean Shores. Um, it, at it, least actually, not. it actually does. There's okay. there zoning for it. So if you if you leave the first sentence in, it covers it. Okay. Take out take out number two completely. Okay. So do we want to make any changes to our current building height? No, it actually works really well. Okay. All right. Okay, now we are on to section C roofing. Um, so they specify what roof materials you are allowed to use in item one. So we've got wood shingle, shake, composition, asphalt, laminate clay, or architectural metal. Um, 
Okay. They say that a um, membrane roof or a built up, oh, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Um, so item two, no exposed fastener corrugated metal or corrugated fiberglass. I think that makes sense. I was just wondering if you have like an outdoor patio or gazebo or something like that, I feel like it's okay to have um, something a little bit less permanent there. There's certainly a number of roofs in town, Pat, metal roofs that have exposed screws. There are, but that's kind of the thing of the past. People aren't doing that anymore. Everything's standing, standing scene. Okay. So I like the idea of saying what we want rather than what we don't want. And I would suggest rewording this to say something like, uh, 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 um, what do they call it? Architectural metal roofs. The, the fasteners and architectural metal roofs will be hidden by the overlapping next sheet of metal. I, I didn't say that, I didn't word that correctly, but rather than say, I don't want to see exposed fasteners, so I say, I want fasteners to be covered by the adjoining sheet. Did that make the only, sense? The only thing is, Richard, is, is number two just spells it out. So well, if you read number two, there's no question. It's like, okay, okay. I, can't have, I can't have metal fasteners on there or exposed metal fasteners. So, so are we, go ahead. Okay. I, I, I'm easy. Okay. Number three, I definitely have an issue unless it's defined better because membrane roofs are typical on homes with, I mean, if you have a very, there could be a flat roof and the street from the street, you don't see the membrane roof, but I mean, Pat, what, what would you say there? Well, um, I agree. I think that, that if we could say something like rolled asphalt, rolled, rolled roofing is not permitted. Um, but yeah, membrane roof, um, like what's on your buildings, Rich, is, Absolutely a great roof. Um, it's just that we don't want asphalt roll up. Um, Cause- And there's no, no offense, membrane roofs aren't pretty. So I would say as long as they're not, as long as you don't see them from the street, you know, sometimes what do you call the wall where you're, you're hiding what's behind Pod. it? Facade. It's a parapet, right. it's called a parapet. Parapet, Par right. Okay. Um, so, Maybe what we say is using a membrane roof or built up roofing uh, would be allowed as long as it doesn't have visual, um, something along those lines. I don't know. Um, as long as it's behind a blank, whatever it is. Right, because most, the only time you would ever use some kind of a roofing like that is if it was on like a one inch per, or a half inch per foot, one inch per foot. Uh, so one twelve or less pitch. So like- For example, I could, see, I could see somebody building a party deck on a fairly flat surface. Yep, and that's what this you use. Product and then potentially having a deck product on top of it, but technically they're in violation because they use a membrane roof. Correct. Which is the only way of actually taking care of that roof space. That's how Seabrook does it. So, so why not just delete number three? That's so wanting to make sure that we don't have somebody that roofs a home with a big old roll of three foot wide, right? Roofing. That's right. Yeah. So then go back to what Pat said and that say something that if a membrane roof is membrane roofs cannot be visible from the uh, from the street. They have to be hidden behind a parapet. Or how about this? Why don't we use built-up roofing? Bur uh, is not a, using uh, built-up roofing. Bur for the primary roofing material is not prohibited, and leave membrane out of it because a TPO roof. Um, is a membrane roof, and that's what Rich is talking about, and that's pretty common practices. So that's what I would do, is just take out 
uh, a membrane roof or and then leave it leave it intact because the built up roofing is what Rich is talking about with the rolled roofing and the tarp the tar between the seams. Is that called a torch really down? Is Pardon that what me? they call a torch down? It is. And, but and a torch a torch down would be used potentially on. I'm going to be wrong, but like the grocery store maybe. Yeah, but even even now that's kind of they would use it if it has that. But if it's built new, it would be TPO. Wouldn't be a torch down. Right, but we don't want to. Uh, I guess so. They technically they're grandfathered in now. Then if they need Correct. to re roof. Yeah. What what does Ace have? They have a metal roof. With exposed fasteners, but it's in a it's in a commercial. We're talking residential here. Okay. So Pat, can you restate? Can can you restate how you just said that? Uh, yeah. Take out take out a membrane roof or those four words. Okay. Thank you. Using using VOR for the primary roofing material is permitted. Not permitted. Is not permitted. Is not permitted. So, so the sentence would read: Using uh, built-up roofing (BUR) for the primary roofing material is not permitted. That's how the sentence would read. And, and so, that, that, oh, go ahead. I, I I thought we were just saying that sometimes sometimes a torch-down roof is the appropriate roof if we if our target if our goal is to have a flat roof that I could maybe put a deck over. No, that's called TPO. It's not torch down. Define TPO. T TPO is a membrane roof. It's like what is it? Thermo. Yeah. Like, no. It's I chemical. It <laughs> TPO. That's what it is. TPO. <laughs> okay. Are we all comfortable with moving on to number four? Yep. Okay, so they, again, they set, specify the 412 pitch. Um, you know, if we had a design review committee, we could allow variances. Um, so if somebody wanted to, if we, if we had language that specified a minimum of 412 pitch, for example, and somebody wanted to build a contemporary home with a lower pitch roof, they could apply for a variance so that would sort of allow um, case by case exceptions. I don't know what you guys think about that, but it's just I would like less work for the city employees personally. Right. Yeah. I, I don't like the minimum roof pitch. I don't. I, I agree with Pat on that. I don't like that. We don't have a snow load issue like other places, like Linden definitely has a snow load issue. It, do, it doesn't matter, Rich. It has to be engineered for it. So if you choose to build a house with a 112 pitch, so some of the new, some of the new contemporary Lindell Cedar home type houses, they're they're doing a lot of one and two 12 pitch roofs, and they have to be engineered for whatever snow load the jurisdiction um, has. So that could be that your joists on top are. 12 inch on center and it'll carry six feet of snow that turns to ice and it has a hundred PSI pounds per square inch loading. But um, the, the, the pitch doesn't really matter as far as structural. Okay. So am I hearing that we're just going to eliminate number four? That would be, that, that would be my vote because as a builder slash designer person, I don't want to have to build everything to a 412 pitch or more. And we don't I, want I, some I poor city employee to have to moderate this. I think the only thing I've heard in favor of keeping the, the 412 pitch is that it makes it harder to transport manufactured homes into the city. It does do that. And I am against legislation that 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 uh, limits uh, 
that whose intention is to limit a manufactured home. I think we need to set the standards for manufactured homes, but I think that we are in violation of, of federal law if we try to eliminate manufactured homes or, or just intentionally make it more difficult. So I like personally just eliminating number four, which is what I think I heard everybody else say. I think, are we all in agreement with that? Yes. Okay, yep. moving forward. Okay, so we have um, section D, building elevations and finishes. I think there's a lot of good stuff here. Um, so number one, residential elevations, and obviously everything we're talking about here applies only to residential. Um, so 1A, the same architectural elevation shall be separated by a minimum of two other homes. And this is what Marlene was talking about at the beginning of the meeting. Basically, this is saying you can't have the same home next door to each other. Um, I would suggest same you might elevation. have the same, 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 same home, it's just they have to look different. Right, right. So Pat, could you explain what architectural elevation means in, in practical? Yeah, so, so you could do, and we've done this out at OIHET, you can design a house that has a cottage look to it. It's the exact same floor plan, but it's got higher pitched roofs. It's got um, gables instead of hips. You all know what gable and hip roofs are? No? Anyway, um, so the, the illustration down below, that is a gabled roof. And a hip roof would be, um, wouldn't have the, the, the pitches going all the way through it, it'd actually come down. So, so what, it's, what it's saying is, is, is if you're gonna build the same house, you have to change it so it doesn't look like the same house. So that, that, is, that is, would be an example. And I can probably come up with some examples to show you that you know, these are the same houses, but here's, they don't even look alike, but, they, but the floor plan's the same. Does the uh, does the reverse qualify as the same house, or is that a different house? That shouldn't qualify. <laughs> Flop in the house shouldn't qualify. They've got to be. We should be able to be able to do an elevation change that that would that would make it look like a different house. We would actually need to state something because, you know, in a in a housing development reversing the same house is one of the ways to do it. If you don't want those side by side, we should say something. Well, let's see, the same ele architectural elevation. So that does say that, because yet by flipping a house, that doesn't change your architectural elevation. All it does is just repositions it. An architectural elevation actually changes the look of the house. So I, I, I think, think I think about a poor I think about a poor city employee that's not a lawyer or a judge that the builder comes in and says, "Dude, it's not the same house. Look, it's reversed. It's not the same elevation." And then what does the poor city employee do? Okay, so why don't we add language that just says reversing or mirroring a home does not change the architectural elevation. Perfect. Okay, and then I would like to talk about the idea that it's um, a minimum of two other homes. I don't know if that's enough. I kind of want to say the same street, but maybe yeah. I'm being... We have streets that are miles long. <laughs> that's that's not fair. Yes. The same visual line? I don't know. I and mean, what do you guys think? I, I think minimum of two other homes is probably fine. Okay. I, I just think that we don't want to, we don't want to stop growth here. No. So um, I think it, we, we would, uh, this, is, this is probably as far pushing it for restriction as we probably want to go. I agree with you. I, I think the way this is written uh, with the change that you just discussed, uh, uh, I think that that fits pretty good. Should it be two other lots instead of homes just to make sure we're not um, I would say homes because some people are sitting on two or three lots. Ah, oh, good point. Wow, yeah. I, I think that the wording is pretty okay just the way it is. Well, what if you have a street that's not very developed and you've got three or four vacant lots and you've only got 
you know, one or two homes and then they're counting homes. Well, I, I mean, just don't think you can cover everything, Tanya. Tanya, I think that if, if there's a house and somebody buys the lot next door, this pretty much clearly spells out that they can't build the same exact house that looks exactly the same. Right. I'm just thinking on a, a more vacant street, are we going to prohibit someone? Maybe there's 10 lots and there's only two homes right now. Are we going to say, well, you can't build that same house because there's only two homes? You well, could maybe say you... something with, with, with 120 feet away. I mean, you could come up with a number of feet that you can't build the same house with. But you've still got the fact that some houses are on multiple lots, so you could end up with the same house, the next house on the block. Yeah. I think the way it is. Right. Is Agreed with that. So leave it the way it is, and if, if that scenario happens, too bad. <laughs> well, you can't legislate everything. Nor do we want to. No. All right. Okay. All right, section B, an articulation. I thought this was really good. Um, an articulation is an architectural element such as a one-story porch or bay window. And it says one such element shall be used on all sides of the building that face toward a public street, shared access easement or common green. It shall be a minimum offset of 12 inches and a garage setback does not count as an articulation. Um, so basically they're saying for every public facing side of the home, there needs to be at least one articulation. And that could be a dormer, that could be a pop out, like, yeah. like what you see on the bottom. Yeah, what do you guys well, think of that? Well, it just doesn't do much for a front porch. It's just a way to change the, um, house so that it has some architectural interest so that it's Agreed. not just a flat wall. I think, yeah, exactly. That's the whole point is to not have just this big flat wall on one side of it. So it, so this isn't, are we getting to another section that talks about porches? There yeah. is another section. Yeah. Yeah. For, so, for how many, for how many feet? It doesn't say feet, it just says it should be offset a minimum. I don't know what they mean by, oh, I guess they're saying offset a minimum of 12 inches. What uh, that means is if you look at the, um, if you look at that little pop out on the side of the house, the side that, could, the that could be cantilevered and it's, and it's, it needs to be a minimum of 12 inches out. Give us an example on the front of the house, Pat, what, what would work that's not, you know, egregious or the builder. A bay window. Well, or the manufactured home builder. Well, again, it, it, this is, this language in here, well, one story porch. So they built that porch on that thing. That's an example of an articulation. Um, Cause without that porch, it'd just be a box. And then that side articulation is another example of what you would pop out on the side. And it's not a big deal for a stick built builder to do it. It's gonna be problematic for a manufactured home to do that. And so a manufactured would, home wouldn't have an issue if they included a porch on the front of the house, but if by chance a manufactured home was on a corner they might have a porch on the front, but then they've got a flat side, which then they got to figure out something to do that's not normal. Correct. So it's it's exactly. anything that's anything that's visual. And most most manufactured homes, they just tuck them into the lot. But if they turn them sideways or if they're on a corner lot, then you you know, like the 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 manufactured home that's on Gunderson, it's just this big box that sits there with little three foot oh. porches. A that bay window happen. would be about the only thing they could do economically. Yeah, and it has to be a minute of 12 inches. So I, I actually think, um, I think this is actually pretty good. I agree with you. And, and, and we're not excluding a manufactured home. We're just saying, if you're on a corner lot, this is the standard you have to meet. Uh, right. That means that, the, that a carpenter comes in 
and and punches in a bay window that sticks out 12 inches, you know, that's the cost of, of, of building, of putting that home on that co on that corner lot. And everybody sees that up front. Uh, uh, so so it it is uh, uh, its target is not specifically anti mobile home. Its target is this is the aesthetic standard for the city. Yeah, I like it. Agreed. All in favor? <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Um, now section two: garage elevations. Uh, See, I, this is maybe too specific. Oh, sorry about that. Too specific for ocean shores. Crazy driver. Yeah. Okay, garage elevation section two. To so, promote, oh. so can I make a comment about garage elevations? Recently on uh, Point Brown, somebody put a big pole building up, attached it to the front of their house. Uh, actually, there's two of them that just happened. And one is just this big behemoth that they stuck up and that's going to be kind of it. That's the kind of thing that, that we need to make sure doesn't happen. I Another agree. guy did a, did a pool building and actually made it look like his house so it doesn't look so bad. But the other one is just, it's, it's really bad. Are you talking about that house with the, with the, the, the motorboat in the front yard with, that used to be some kind of a sign uh, business? I don't know. If that's the. It's they just put it up. It's not even painted yet. Okay, that's not it. There, yeah. There's there's a two story, and it looks like the ground floor is all garage, uh, and it's it's just it's the lot before the left turn from Point Brown onto going towards the towards the uh, uh, the, the CIC. And there's, okay. there's there's an old runabout that's that's part of the you know. Part of the oh, decor. right. I've, I've seen that part of the landscape. So, so let, let me just share this with you. Um, having built a few houses in Ocean Shores, Ocean Shores lots are difficult. Um, Mount Olympus, all along the lake there, those lots are only 50 feet wide. Um, and then when you go on the other side of the lake where Danny lives, those lots are 60 feet wide. To build a house where you don't have the garage door being what you see is going to be almost impossible to do. Um, I've tried to design, trying to do a, a garage that deadheads in where you actually, the garage doors are on the side and you put windows in the front. You just don't have the room to turn to, to articulate a car in and out of that. So it's, it's, it's going to be a real challenge if we try and make it so that we are not allowing garages to be forward facing. And then on this thing on A, where it says the ground level, the garage facade shall not exceed forward of the home's living space by more than 12 feet. Nine times out of 10, when you're designing a house, the gr whole garage is forward of the house. Yeah. And so that's 24 feet. And it's just difficult to do anything up to that with the way Ocean Shores was platted. In Linden, they're dealing with huge lots. This just doesn't apply to us. I, I agree. I, I agree. This just does not apply. And I would scratch this whole two. Is there something besides B, A, and B? Uh, well, in section B, um, I, I don't know if we want to talk about this, but it does say that the um, Garage door cannot exceed more than 50% of the building elevation or more than 60%. Um, so do we want to discuss that or do we just there's, want to leave there, There's code that already addresses that. Okay. But that's my thought exactly, is, is there's nothing wrong with, with the vast majority of the houses that are already existing on Ocean Shores. Uh, so whatever code has been covering, I think has been doing an okay job. We just leave it alone. Okay, so yep. we're going to so what, we could, what we could do, where it says garage elevations, um, we could put some verbiage, this is on number two, we put some verbiage in there that says that the garage elevations need to be in keeping with the um, architectural design of the house, of the existing house, so it doesn't look like somebody just stuck something up there randomly. Okay, I'm I agree. 
I'm making a note of that. Um, so it would be garages must mimic the home's architectural design. Yeah, something like that. Okay. We, do we want to add the words attached or detached garages must mimic the home's architectural design? I believe we do. Both attached and detached garages must mimic. Okay. Fair enough. Good. All right. Okay, so now we're on section three, exterior finishes. I'm just gonna bump the page up a little bit here. Okay. I don't know what we just did with that comment is I can't go build myself a, a big metal yeah. garage on the side of my house that looks like a big gigantic metal garage. Right, no, but what you could do is build a big garage with the same roof pitch and style as your house and then it'd be fine. About my siding. Same. Same siding as my house. Well, that would be nice. Well, that's what I'm saying. We got we, we got to acknowledge that there's a lot of people, as Eleanor's talked about, double lots that will, uh, and, and you know, they've combined them because they don't want to pay the extra taxes and extra community club fees that then go put up a big old metal building next door. Or T111. So, Maybe what we should say both attached and detached garages must, I don't know if mimics the right word or if we say must be in keeping with the architectural design and exterior finishes of the existing home. Okay. That gets rid of my metal, my metal uh, T111 looking siding. Unless you have it on your house. Which I do. <laughs> <laughs> No, you, you won't allow me to have that on the side of my house. No, has to be in keeping with what you got. So this specifically talks about garages. Uh, um, how about if somebody wants to put up a metal carport, uh, is our metal carports then still allowed? And there's an abundance of metal carports throughout this community. There, there's a whole section further down about outbuildings and carports as well. Um, but I do think we should talk about it. When we get there. Or, or we can talk more now, but I just wanted to let you know we will come across that later. Okay. Are we good then for now? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we're on exterior finishes, section three. Um, this is also good. It says section three A. The exterior of the home must be finished with a minimum of two types of variations of materials or variations in reveals. I would want well, I'm to... out of I'm out of sync, and I thought I had a nice house. <laughs> yeah, yeah this... me too. I've got concrete siding that looks like wood siding, uh, right? And the whole house is clad in that, uh, and I think it looks pretty good. So, so Rich, to your point, um, so minimum of two types of material or variations in siding. So if you took lap siding or say T111 and you just cover the whole thing without, no, don't do any window trims, um, no detail at all, which a lot of houses have been built that way, that would be considered one type of material. Two types of material would be lap siding, and then you would put um, trim around all the windows. That would be your second texture. Rich, as long as my windows are trimmed, I'm, I pass. In my mind, that is correct. Okay. So, so, so that I just said it makes sense to me, but then I think we need to add to three A uh, uh, window trim counts as a second type of material. So I put, I put a comment that says trim counts as a second reveal. Yep. So should I, should I say window and door trim? Or just window, window trim? trim. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, okay. I, I think though that uh, I like what you said though. I like keeping window in there. Okay. All right, and then we have section B, exposed fastener metal siding is prohibited on residential buildings. 
So there's there's some some real high end architectural metal that has things that look like bolts. I mean, right. so I don't know if I, I understand what what the purpose of this is, but do we put some provision in that allows somebody to get a variance to this? Well, you're ruining my ability to build myself a shop on my own property. I don't you like it. You wouldn't want to pay for this one. <laughs> so design elements have definitely changed in the last uh, decade. Um, our current code, as I understand it, prohibits any metal siding. That is correct. So maybe we want to change the current code to allow certain types of metal siding. Architectural metal siding. Okay, um, so I'll make a note to add architectural metal siding. Yeah, I was gonna say my lake house used to have shingle and architectural metal in it. I don't know, it seemed to sell pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> okay, so I'm using this section B as a placeholder to add that comment. So that so we're going to say um, architectural metal is an approved siding material. What I would do, do we, on that one is say take accents, take the exposed, take the exposed fastener and replace that with architectural metal siding is allowed or it's it's uh, allowed on residential building. Okay. How, how about architectural metal siding is allowed comma with a variance comma. Uh, um, does that clarify? I it, think we it, need to make a decision if we're going to allow um, variances for aesthetic decisions or if we're going to completely steer away from that because if we're going to allow case-by-case -case reviews for something then then we are opening up a whole nother process yeah and, we are and if we're going to do that um i think we should apply it to more than one thing but so rich not... rich an example of of architectural metal siding is your acm that's on your chevy store and your toyota store Right. And that, that's really popular on super high end homes. But it's a accent piece. It's not the entire piece. Correct. But so the way it's what I worry about here, metal. I worry about here that we're not saying that the architectural metal is an accent. We're just saying you can do it. So that means the whole house could be metal. Is that what we want? Because well, could, I know you, some people that will take this to the letter of the law and they'll build themselves a nice metal shed. Well, we could say that the architectural metal um, is, is, whoops, where, where'd you go? Where'd it go? Where'd, you just oh. went driving fast again. Sorry, that, uh, okay, we're on B at the top of the page right here. Okay, we go up a little bit more if you don't mind. Okay. Up, up, up. There we go. There. So we could say that the architectural metal siding could be used as one of the variations in reveal. Okay. So, so that could be that. I don't know. So another another thought. That is sounds good. Late that any metal siding uh, has to be engineered to withstand the sustained 130 mile an hour winds that is the roof standard in ocean shores. Well, yeah, it would, it would anyway. What about corrosion? Pardon? What was, your, what was your question? Eleanor? I think we should allow it as an accent and specify that. So you could say architectural metal roofing, excuse me, architectural metal siding is allowed as and an accent. accent only. Right. And not the primary siding material? Correct. Okay. 
There you go. Okay. So then do we take out item B altogether? No, then if you're going to do that, I'd leave item B in place. Just like it is? Yes. Okay, so then that comment is gone. Okay. My, my expensive lake house had exposed screws, Pat. Uh, well, okay. They were color coordinated. Oh, that's good. <laughs> hmm. I have to come back to that. Okay. So I'm going to make a note on item B that um, metal siding and fasteners uh, require further review. Is that okay? Yep. yep. Okay. Awesome. Okay, item C, exposed ends of stone and masonry facades are not permitted and must be finished with trim or end caps. Exposed ends, so like a cut end of stone or a cut end of masonry. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, everyone else, we're good? I think it's good. All right, item D, all garage sides that are visible from streets or shared access easements shall provide architectural details and trim consistent with the design of the home. Love it, love right. it. Great. Do, we, do we want it to only apply to public facing sides or do we want that to apply to the entire garage? I like public oh. facing personally. Yeah, okay. So we have streets or shared access easements. So that would be waterfront, golf course, and roadways, right? Would that apply to all of them? I think uh, yeah. now, you're, uh, now you're pumping it up there. <laughs> so when I build my big metal garage and I'm on the golf course, not only do I have to have the street side finished in product that matches my house. Now you're going to make me do the back of it too. Yes. Yep. You guys are getting aggressive. You're, you're hurting my rights. No. Wear a mask. I have my shots. You wear a mask. I have my shots. Oh, here we go. <laughs> so, but anyway, yes, the, the, your, your golf course garage uh, has to be visually appealing. And that's what this is saying. So we we're, we're getting down a rabbit hole here. I'm, I'm thinking about city council trying to approve this. Well, we can only do what we can do and send it to them. Are we, are we comfortable with keeping this as it is or do we wanna have more discussion about it? Just like it is. Oh, it is. Yeah, I like it. Okay. Are you okay with that, Rich? And overruled. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, item E. So in certain zones, attached garages or attached carports, which provide a third covered or enclosed space, must be offset a minimum of two feet from the first two covered or enclosed spaces. Yeah. So what they're saying there is... It should either set it forward or set it back um, if you're going to put a third car garage. In. So you just don't have this. You just don't have this big, big um, wall of garage doors. So it wouldn't be able, like, if you had a two-car garage and you had enough space on your lot, you wouldn't be able to just attach a third garage to that two-car garage. No, you would. You just have to set it back two feet. So set it back. Set it. Back. Oh, okay. Okay. So they could share a wall, but their their visual line across the front would have a two foot. Yes. Okay. And, and what what is gained by that two feet? Uh, it just uh, it just breaks makes up the flatness. Yep. It it's the same reason that they want a bay on the side. So it's just not a big flat wall with French garage door. Right I, I, I'm okay with it. I just wanted to 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 
fully understand the reasoning. Uh, and I think that that's appropriate. And it doesn't say it has to be back. It says a minimum offset. So it could be back. Right. Forward. Yeah, I'd, ra I'd rather you said it had to be 10 feet back, but that's just me. <laughs> and that, that would allow me to build a 12 foot deep garage door for garage. Right. right. Are we okay with this? And are we okay with yes. a third covered enclosed space? Third or more? Or I mean, I don't know. Okay, hold on. I am. Uh, so this isn't just talking about the additional ugly carport. This really means if you've got a three car garage, yeah, it's got to be offset. So I miss I misread it. Yeah, and I think that's right. I think it should be. And maybe instead of saying a third, maybe to address what Tanya is saying, which provide more than two covered or enclosed spaces must be instead of a third more than two okay or additional provides uh, attached carports which provides yeah yeah it's pretty rare that we have somebody with a four car garage in ocean shores but i guess it could happen or you can say a third or more if you really want to cover it. That's what my metal barn is for next door to my house. Would you quit? <laughs> or more. How about if you do that? Say, which provides a third or more covered or enclosed space must be an offset of a minimum of two feet. Um, so what if, would, they, would the um, third and beyond all be offset two feet or could they be different, right? I'm just, I mean, it could be like a little tier where they. Yeah, you'd have to have a hell of a lot to keep. I know, going. I know. I just. Yeah, I, I think, I think it, I think the way it's written actually gets the point across. It gets the point across. It just leaves some, some confusion if somebody actually had a four car garage. If you put over more, it covers it because if you keep reading it down, it says two feet from the first two covered or enclosed spaces. So it'd be the third and beyond or more. Okay, good enough. But if I build it, I'm just being nitpicky, but if I build a six car garage, uh, the next four bays uh, can all be one solid wall as long as right. they're offset by two feet from right. the first. Is yeah. that what we want? <laughs> I, I mean, I've driven around Ocean Shores quite a bit. I've never seen a more than four car garage. Well, Jay Leno may move here. Who knows? Well, yeah, that's true. But he's going to buy the weather wax property and develop it. No, I, I'm being nitpicky. And maybe, you know, the reality is there are no lots big enough for a six car garage and a house, uh, but somebody may buy a, may buy Rich Hartman's whole block up there by the post office. Yeah, but then, then it's commercial. <laughs> well, yeah, but if they were on, money. if they were on two lots, they they're on two lots, there's plenty of room to do multiple car garages. Uh, do we want to say every, every two bays must be offset or is that too restrictive? It, and I think that it's okay just the way it is because as Pat pointed out, uh, everybody understands what it's saying, but if you get the hard-headed person who is just looking to, 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 to make a wave, uh, then what, Tanya, what you just suggested, that every additional two bays have to be offset by two feet might be appropriate. But again, I don't think that there's any residential lots that have room for a four or six car garage. Well, plus that code prohibits the garages to be that much more than the residents. So that's also true. So, yeah. so I've gone down a rabbit hole and, and, and I apologize. It we're all in. Okay. I don't know the way it is. Okay. So we're okay moving forward. 
Yep. Okay. All right, section E, porches, stoops, decks, and patios. We've all been waiting for this. Okay, so porches and stoops. A, architecture of the primary pedestrian entrances must include cover from the elements. Eve overhang alone does not constitute cover. I love, love it. Love it, that's perfect. Okay. And they avoided talking about specific sizing, which I thought was kind of cool. Yep. All right, there we go. Okay, item B, steps used to access front porches or stoops must be complementary to the primary structure. Through I like that too. No more oh. pressure treated wood front stairs. Okay. Yep. yep. Um, through the use of coordination materials or I think they meant coordinated their materials or architectural elements. Okay, are we good with that then? Yep. Okay, should it be coordinated? Yes. Yes. Coordinated, okay. Item C, stairs with open risers are not permitted on front porches or stoops. That's awesome. That's pretty deep. <laughs> Getting crazy. Are we okay with that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So when they say front porches, do we wanna say primary entrance porch? since we've decided that um, not everybody's gonna have a front porch. So then what you might say is steps used to access front porches, comma stoops, uh, or primary entrances. Primary formal entrance. Public facing. Well, oh. If you say public facing, you got to think about Eleanor and the way her house was designed. Mm -hmm. If other people do that, do they not have to follow this? If we can't. Yeah. You know, it's particularly true of folks who live on the waterways. The front of the, what would traditionally be the front of the house tends to face the waterways, which gives you a whole different design uh, consideration, um, particularly with narrow lots. Sure. Yeah. So, so do you guys know what open risers are? Yes. Good point. <laughs> so, so an open riser, when you build the stair jacks, they just, they stair step up. So an open riser would be something where you just put the stair tread on the top and you don't cover up the face. So that's all we're talking about. So I think a generic Isn't statement, it? stairs with open risers are not permitted on front porches or stoops. I would just say stairs with open risers are not permitted, period. Yep. Even if nobody else can see it? Yeah, I mean, it's it, for, for, for no other reason, it's a, it's a safety element. You stick your big foot in there and you go up to the next step and you trip. Okay, are we all feeling comfortable with that? Yes. No objections, okay, moving forward. Okay, decks and patios. Um, so item 2A, uncovered wood decks and raised concrete patios not over 24 inches above grade. <laughs> At any point may be permitted within 18 feet. Okay, I think this gets too into the woods on or to the into the weeds on the. Um, yeah, there, there, there's already um, there's already code that covers setbacks. Yeah. So as it sits today, a deck, uncovered deck, wood or concrete, can encroach one third into a setback. So if you have a 25 foot setback on the back of your house. And you built your house to that setback, you can have your your um, porches encroach one third of that setback, as long as you're not covered. That's that's current code. So we can ignore this for now. Um... Wait a minute. Let's see what does the rest of it say. Roof structure covered decks. Yeah, this that's covered under our setbacks. Uh, the remains open on three sides doesn't really. That's not applicable because you're going to want to probably enclose a lot of the decks out on the lake because of the, the massive amount of wind that you get. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, I would just, I would strike that whole thing because we already have that all covered by code. Okay. Is everyone comfortable with that? Yeah, okay, moving on to 19.22.040, detached garages and accessory structures. Okay, so they talk about their objective and then they say to be considered a detached structure, the minimum distance between two structures shall be six feet measured from foundation to foundation. With yeah, our, our code's five feet. We already have a five foot code? We do. Okay. Um, so do we need to change that? Do we care? Is that all fine? Uh, let's see. I think it's, as long as it's, if it's talking about architectural style, um, number two, um, I think that probably is a good idea. Yeah. Okay, but so let's- I don't, I don't think we need to have that we can just make a reference to current code. Okay. okay, so if we kept this document, we would just reference current code. Correct. Could I address something on auxiliary structures? We have zero limit on how many structures you can put on a property. Um, just down the street from me, they've already have four and they're still building. Yeah, I've noticed that. And is that true, the current code has no limit or is it just that it's not being enforced? It is no limit, I checked. Okay, and then you're required to get a permit though for a certain size. Oh, uh, no, yeah. no, not for a shed or, in fact, people that build a um, kind of an office, as long as it doesn't have running water, they're not, pulling permits for those. And there's no limit to how many structures you can have out there. And I, I think they needs to be. Right across from me, we have well, a shed. Is, is there anything in our code that talks about what percentage of the lot can be covered by structure? The yeah. living code refers to that. Uh, I didn't look very thoroughly in Ocean Shores code. Uh, so does our code, Pat, does our code uh, tell what percentage of the lot can be covered by a, by a structure? It, it I does. checked with Alicia before she left and she told me there is absolutely no limit to how many structures you can put on the property. But she but, did say that you, you could only be- Two different things, Eleanor. Covered. Uh, so there may be no limit, uh, but is there a limit on the percentage of the lot that can be covered by a structure. Uh, Pat, you started to answer it and then I, I couldn't hear. There, there is a limit. Um, and I don't know exactly what the number is, but I think it's around 40%. I think she told us 40% before she left. Yeah. So, so I could build 10 or 20 structures. They're all two feet by two feet. Uh, um, but as long as I don't exceed the the uh, uh, the percentage of lot covered, then I'm in compliance, and I'm I'm reaching out to an extreme, you know, just to support what Eleanor is saying. Do we want to allow 20 two foot structures? Yeah, maybe not. But is anybody actually going to build that? Uh, um, so if it's already if the percentage of lot is already covered in the existing zoning regulations, then I think that we've addressed this sufficiently. However, <laughs> if we have a, if I have my home on my lot and I have a vacant lot next door to me, you can see how I could build multiple 10 by 12 structures because I'm not covering, I've got zero coverage on that lot now. So she, she makes a good point. Should we say something about how many 10 by 12 structures yeah. can you have? Yeah, but I thought it was 11 by 8. Well, oh, I'm sorry. So this square feet. It's 200 yeah. square feet. Okay, so this, <laughs> this example says 10 by 120 square feet. So Ocean Shores is 10 by 10? 
I thought Ocean Shores, like on a camping lot, I thought that you could have a shed up to 11 by eight. Well, it's still square footage. So Pat's 100 square it's, foot? It's 100, it's 100 square feet. Okay. okay. So without, the owner's without, point. Without a permit. The owner's point, how many of those 100 square foot structures do you want me to build on my vacant lot here next door to me? I think they should be a limit. I agree, I agree with you because, because there's a good example with so many people that have extra lots. What's what's reasonable to let them get away with? I'm, I'm thinking three. Wow, that's generous. I was thinking two. Yeah, I was thinking two, two. I mean, think about it, guys. The only reason somebody would do that is build three, four, five is to get away from having to permit a garage. Exactly. Sure, but I, uh, I've i got one of them's my office, uh, one of them's my wood shed, one of them's my tool shed with my lawnmowers, and uh, one of them's my hobby shed. And I really like them. Yeah, and what if you have a covered patio? Does that count as a structure? No. No. So we have to kind of specify what a structure is. I just think there has to be a limit because I, I know one property close to us, it looks like they're building a village. Tiny homes. Tanya, can you scroll down? Yes. <laughs> okay. I know you're multitasking, sorry. No, no problem. Okay, so we're looking at. See, that's why I'm, yeah, I'm thinking that this may answer some of those questions. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at. So we're on item A, general requirements. All accessory structures shall conform to the um, IBC code. And then it says the architecture, item two, architectural style of any detached garage, shop, or shed must match the style of the primary structure. I agree with that. That would help. What well, about but now you, you've eliminated my ability to go buy a pre-made 10 by 10 and shove it on my lot. Yep, we did. How big brother are you guys gonna be to me? Well, what, what's our goal here? Is our goal to make Ocean Shores a better looking place? Right. And, and comma, and get the city council to approve it. You know, you've got a good point there. It would be nice to have it architecturally similar, but I think most people have a garden shed or would want a garden shed and can't afford to have it um, specifically built to match the home. Okay, but what about this? What if they buy a, a pre-made shed and they're required to paint the same colors or not? I think most people can afford a couple gallons of paint. I really like my garden shed to look like a garden shed, Pat. I don't want it to match my house. Okay. How do you, how do you, how do you attack some of those things? Well, you know, the house in question that I talked about has, has three or four different structures and they're all different colors. <laughs> well, one I'm an artist. Right. One, one, of them, one of them's my pottery shed, one of them's my painting shed, one of them's, you know, my jewelry shed where I make jewelry. But I have to look at it. Right. So again, we've got to get city council to want to approve some of this stuff. Eleanor is not wrong, but, you know, how do you get through some of this? Well, I think if we could at least put some limit would be a starting point. Okay. How, so many dogs, how many how many pets do they allow? Three? So let's make it three. <laughs> that sounds perfectly logical to me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> how many what's do they allow? One shed per pet. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. So so I have I have a comment, and Rich, you you keep saying this. Uh, about how do we get it past city council? And the thought that's surfing through my mind right now 
is 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 I don't care how we get it through city council. Right now, city council is so contentious that you may not get uh, anything through city council. Uh, and our objective is not to uh, mollycoddle city council. Our objective is to make Ocean Shores a more attractive community to live in. And then city councils can sort out what that means to them uh, and, and they can get over their, their contentiousness uh, or not. Uh, so I would personally prefer that, that uh, uh, trying to appease uh, members of the city council uh, is counterproductive to beautifying the community. Uh, but if there's a difference, if we do all of this and we do all what we think is a perfect job and they don't like it, it goes in the round file. You guys have a history of a ton of things in the round file. If we were able to choose one thing to help beautify our town and actually got it approved, we're making more progress having one change than you've had in years getting nothing handled. So you you've, made got, argument. you've got to work the politics here. You, you make a good argument, but but I, I think that as a sidebar, uh, addressing city council has some merit, but I don't think that it should be our primary focus um, um, because nothing may actually get through city council um, uh, through the existing city council. Um, so I don't know how much energy we spend on that as a goal, but, but I care what you say, uh, that getting, getting at least one thing through is a step in the right direction. So I, I, I don't know what else to say. I'm gonna shut up. Let me, let me get in here, because I, I, I think there is some, some things going on in council that actually have, have gotten a little better. Uh, they are working on the comp plan. Um, and they are making changes. They're actually going through line item by line item, changing small words, sometimes limiting things. So I think we need to do with how we think we want Ocean Shores to work. And if they continue to work like this, they're, they're doing it in ad hoc, three people ad hoc things. Um, and, and those three people make the recommendation to the rest of the council. So if they continue to do that, I think it behooves us to do it how we think it should be done, not what we think we can get through the council, because you have no clue. We all have no clue what we're going to get through. It's whether it's a hot topic, they, they tend to just get away from it. But if it's not a hot topic, I think they may go through it. So some of the stuff that we haven't gotten through, it, were, it wasn't because what we gave them wasn't good. It was because they didn't want to work on it because it was a hot topic and they didn't want to have that over their heads. So I think we do it how we think we want Ocean Shores to work. That's our, that's our chart. I agree with you. I agree. Okay. All right. Back to item A2. So we've got the idea that we don't want to restrict people from having a pre-made shed um, but we also know that we would like to regulate them somehow. Do you guys have any suggestions for how we might, um, how we might? What, what, what if we change it, instead of saying architectural style of a detached garage shop or shed must match the style of the primary inspector, um, that it's highly recommended or some sort of verbiage that leaves that in, but it doesn't make it a requirement, but a, a strong recommendation. Oh, oh, I like that. I also, I also think that they ought to have to pay them the same for as they have. Why don't we think about that over the next two weeks? I, I think um, Good idea. it requires a little thought and it's probably the break time anyway. Yes. Job, Tanya. Um, it's, uh, we've got nine minutes left to the meeting, so we're definitely going to be revisiting this next meeting so let's let's do this I, I would like to make a comment about painting the same color as the house and it's my experience that getting paint to stick to a plastic shed uh um is like mixing oil and water uh and paint's just not going to stick so i'm not sure that painting a plastic shed is feasible right 
Okay, we got about five minutes, then we're gonna have to wrap it up. Okay. All right, so we are leaving it at um, item A on whatever page we're on here, and we'll come back. So starting with Shed's next meeting. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna send this out to everyone after the meeting's over. Thank you, Tanya. You did a great job. Thank you, guys. And thank you, Richard, for suggesting that we look at Lyndon. I think it's really helpful. So I, I agree with Eleanor. I think this has been a, a, a fruitful, productive meeting. And I really appreciate the back and forth dialogue. Uh, sometimes I ask a question or make a statement uh, just because I'm trying to get it clear in my own mind. Uh, um, uh, and, and the dialogue helps me create a paradigm that makes things make sense. If that made any sense at all. I appreciate the dialogue. So are we gonna stop working on this and just wrap it up? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right, back to the agenda. Okay. Our next uh, secretary note taker is Greg Cox. Uh, I thought that Greg said he was not going to be here for two meetings. So I talked to him. He, he, this was, he wasn't going to be here for the previous one. He was, Greg told me he will be back. Okay. If Greg's not here, who's back up? I think it's me. Okay. I'll, I, I could send that out. I've got a schedule on that. Send it out. Katie got it. Um, our next client commission meeting is Tuesday, May 11th, 2021. Wow. I'm fine. So do I have a motion to adjourn? I make that motion. And I second. Okay. So move. Thanks. Good conversation. Thank you all. Thanks, you guys. So Dan, I want to, I want to, actually, I can just say it here that it, it may just be my computer, but I find you very hard to understand when you speak, it kind of breaks up. And I wonder if a really inexpensive uh, a USB microphone uh, would, would fix that. Just a suggestion, just, it, 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 but when you speak, it's hard for me to, to understand. Okay, I'll look into it. How's uh, how's mine sound? I don't have any. You sound great. You sound great. Loud and clear. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. The only other person that that Eleanor sometimes is also very hard to understand, and in Eleanor's case, it may be your computer volume isn't up loud enough, or an inexpensive USB microphone may also help. Okay. And, and, you know, I, I, and it's just. I, I know that I have a hearing deficiency uh, and it's hard for me to hear some frequencies anyway, but uh, uh, so I try to address that. And I, I do that by turning my volume, my, my speaker volume up here, that helps. But consistently, Eleanor and Dan are hard for me to hear. I can hear Eleanor, except occasionally, it seems like maybe Eleanor, you get too far away from your microphone perhaps, but Dan, when you talk, there's some kind of a, a feedback going on. Yeah, it rings. So, yeah. See you guys next time. Okay, it's guys. Linda. I know it's Linda, Dan. She's back there whistling. I, can, I just know it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See, See you guys. Bye, guys. Bye.